Hello y'all and welcome to the internet. I've designed another train game. Maybe this is because I like trains. Well, can't be helped. Trains are a thing and I like them a lot. Anyway, the sweetheart and I were sitting down in front of the telly, uh, randomly clicking on YouTube stuff. And we came across a video that was, you know, uh, new video train games for 2024. I'm not a video gamer really. I have a cube and we get that out occasionally, very occasionally. But that's the extent of my video gaming. So not really a video gamer. Uh, but I clicked on this because it had the word trains. And in it there was a game called Train Manager. Uh, probably should try harder with naming stuff, I think. Um, uh, which I have actually played um, on the Dear Woman Switch. Um, and as a single player game, it's like me, you know, you select some routes and make trains go around without crashing into each other. Uh, but cooperating when the pair of you are controlling stuff, one with each controller, it's a hoot. It really shines. Which made me think, I wonder if this would make a good co-op board game. Anyway, got to work, didn't I? Initially, I just uh, quickly laid out some tiles in GIMP. If you want to see how to use GIMP to do some board gamey graphic stuff, or like maybe a party invite, um, I do a video, I'll post a link here or something, about how I did some uh, money tokens for playing uh, 1822. Um, which is like 25, 30 minutes long maybe, and it will give you a good basis of how to use GIMP or other Photoshop type clones at a very basic level, but in a way that you would probably find useful if that's your thing. Um, anyway, so I printed some stuff out on like bits of paper, uh, fiddled around with them on the table, I uh, immediately came across a few problems, uh, fiddled around a bit more, and eventually I got to a point where I was confident enough that um, I would actually make a prototype where you, I, I, as I explained in the video, that, as I explained in the video that I mentioned earlier, um, you print stuff out on A4 adhesive labels and stick them to a cardboard sheet and when you cut them out, you have like a nice prototype that's actually fun to handle, looks like you've put some effort in. So when you go to your playtesting buddies, and these are valuable people, uh, they don't look like you've just come up with some idea 10 minutes ago that's a bit half-assed. And um, it looks like you've actually given it some thought and done some yards, meters, whatever your unit of length is. Uh, and as I've said before, playtesters are a valuable commodity to be treasured. Nobody wants to playtest your game. You're as excited as anything about it, but understand that that's just you. Everyone else would rather play some of their other games that are already, you know, have proper plastic and wooden bits and nice glossy printing. What have I not pointed out yet? It's a cooperative game, and it can also be played solo. I am not a solo gamer. Um, I like to game with friends, you know, like it's a people thing, gaming to me. Uh, but I understand there's a bunch of people out there that like to sit at a table and dig into a puzzle, because really a solo game is just a very fancy, chromey, interesting puzzle. And this game... You can quite happily play it by yourself. I have tried. I got bored. Uh, but playing it with someone else, like the video game I talked about, actually quite good fun. So anyway, first of all, you build the map. You put the first tile down. You shuffle all the other tiles. The first tile is marked. And then the players take turns in placing the tiles to build a, a network map on the table. Um, there's some rules about that. If the tile you're currently placing doesn't fit very well, you can pick up the tile you placed just previously to that, flip it over or change it or put it somewhere else so that your network works better. Once the network is out, everyone around the table will have a token that shows that they're in charge of one of the stations on the network. 
I should say that you cannot put two stations next to each other. There always needs to be a tile with just plain line on it uh, between them. The stations can go on the edge of the board. But that seems to be a problem. Uh, well, it certainly makes play a little more difficult as far as train crashes are concerned. Uh, but that's okay. But you cannot put two stations directly adjacent. So on a player's turn, they flip the top card of uh, I'm not sure what to call the deck. The deck with pretty trains on it. It needs a name. Come up with a name below. Um, you flip the top card and follow the instructions. Half the cards, roughly, will be a new train enters the board. And this happens by rolling some dice. You have one dice, which is the locomotive, and two other colours of dice, which are loads. There are load colour A and load colour B. You roll all of the dice that you're told, and the number on the locomotive dice is how many of the other dice you could choose to add to that train and it will line up next to the board ready to come on. Uh, the card that you flip may also ask you to do other things like move a train an extra space or unload some extra dice. Because what you're trying to do is move that train around your network to a station that matches the number on the dice in the load. So blue number five dice will go to the blue number five station. So you start your turn flipping a card following its instructions. The next thing you do is you can do one action at every station that you're in charge of. Um, and the action can be shunt your train into a siding so another train can enter the station without crashing into it. Unload dice that that station will accept from one of your trains. Um, or start a train. So a train is in a station and it's leaving. It's called starting a train. It's actually the term they use, I believe. In which case, that train will move out of the station onto the line, the top, the bit of line next to it. After you've done your station actions, you move every train on the board forward one space that's not in a station. And this is where the challenge comes because obviously two trains cannot be in the same space. If you have a train in your station and it's not in the siding and another train enters that station, you lose. If you have two trains entering the same uh, location on the board, that's a collision. You lose. And also, if you flip a card that says you must have a train enter the board and you don't have a spare locomotive in the dice pool because the dice are limited, then you also lose. However, if you manage to fill the scorecard up, there's 24 spaces on the scorecard for various colored dice to go, 12 of each color, um, you win. And being a cooperative game, you all win as a group. Now, I think this game probably needs a little bit more development, but the wonderful playtester and I have um, had a few cracks at it. It's actually quite good fun. Um, and it's only like 15, maybe 20 minutes, so it's not a particularly heavy game. It doesn't take a lot to set up. Uh, but what we have found is the network you lay out with the tiles is really important because if you don't have enough places for trains to come on uh, the board, varying places, because you will have a little bit of choice in the cards that you flip, uh, you end up with them all coming on in one spot if you're unlucky and then they crash, um, which means you have to start again. So anyway, once again, Thank you for watching the video. Thank you to all my subscribers and a shout out to my new subscribers uh, that I met at a dear old friend's uh, long lunch the other day. Man, that was fun. Um, and play well.